Hello everyone. Greetings from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Bits Wysak. We are happy to invite you all to the paper presentations session and its proceedings here on in accordance to GWEST 2020 Global Webinar on Engineering Science and Technology jointly organized by Bits Wysak and IFERP. I would now take the privilege of inviting Dr. K. Venkatanagendra and Dr. M. Usenaya to present their paper entitled A Study on Object Detection Tracking and Identifying Object Names Using OpenCV. Thank you. Dr. K. Venkatanagendra, I am working as an Associate Professor in the Department of CSC, Adh Sankara College of Engineering and Technology, Guru. Now I would like to explain the Study uh, study on the object detection tracking identification object name using OpenCV. See here, OpenCV is an algorithm, or it is a. Uh, in this paper, I am explaining the uh, object detection of the using the OpenCV method. This OpenCV method is very much useful in the uh, Python. Uh, actually, uh, in olden days, it is object detection location. It is very common, very important aspect in all the things, and it is a very common thing. But the main goal of this thing is suppose if any um, uh, mobile objects, it is clearly it will give the clear image detection. So, using this open CV method, we can find out the object belongs to which one. This is the project we are going to develop. And we will give the sum of the names. It will be uh, visible whether it is an object or whether it is a human or whether it is a. Suppose if you show the show that the mouse, it will detect the that particular object name. And the uh, previously the existing system is already it is there in computer vision starting accuracy from uh, accuracy is the main uh, problem from last decades. It is uh, some of the resu uh, uh, some of the problems will be reduced using the deep learning techniques. But in still, it is the main drawback in the our uh, existing. Suppose it is in a motion, it will be not clearly visible that particular object. So this is the main drawback. No object detection is exactly in the system. So using open CV method, only uh, actually it is executed using C C plus plus uh, C plus plus versions and Java. Now we are using this one with the Python. The Python will be. See uh, yeah, the exactly track the that particular object. In this proposed method, we will use the dense optical flow. This algorithm will be it is an optical flow, is a pattern apparent from the motion of the image object between consecutive frames caused by the movement of the object or camera. And the spares optical flow algorithm. This is also same as but uh, um, the difference between these uh, two is it can some of the pixels will be. Um, you know, the some of the pixels will be read by this uh, spare optical flow, but in dense optical flow, uh, entire the uh, object will be entire the pixels will be clearly visible. That is the system. And one more thing, this is the proposed method, Kalman filtering, or it is also known as linear quadratic estimation. In this algorithm, that was the series of the measurements observed over the time contains the statistical noise and other inaccuracies. So. The advantage of this means upload. If any video file is, if you want to upload, or you, after uploading the video file, you want to find out the what is that image that will be clearly visible using this method. So here we are using the mean shift and uh, calm shift. These are this is the one algorithm. Here maximum density functions are used. Single object tracker is also used. This single object tracker and browse. So using single object tracker in this class tracker, the first frame marked using the rectangle and indicated the location of the object we want to track. The object is tracked in the subsequent frames using the track algorithm. In most real life application, the tracker is used in the conjugate object. That means if you are any boxes will be in that particular box only, the object will be visible. The object name will be displayed and uh, browse the system video and uh, start the webcam video tracker. These two are the, suppose see here, this is the browse system video. If first we will browse this one. If you want to click this, it will go to the, like this. If you upload the any videos, the video will be played and that particular image will be displayed like the, these type of boxes. So whether the name will be detected, it will be displayed, whether it is a human or uh, any uh, moving object, it will be displayed. The, 
so here starting the object tracking object from video and mark them with the boundary boxes see like this these boundary boxes will be displayed on particular image so this is also one of the object detection so the object will be displayed it will displace the he is belongs to one human like so the uh, after that we will enter in the obje object videos we will enter after uh, the after using those object we can delete those objects and yeah. ఐడెంటిఫై <laughs> so the main thing of this uh, open cv means previously it will be detect it is very difficult to detect the moving objects it will create um, the open cv method using python we can easily conclude uh, we can easily find the object names whatever we are giving that it is an easy identify and give the names so that is the my pr uh, presentation and here this is the main use of the open cv method in python so future scope also it can be applied for the primary it companies anything if any robberies will come now if there it is moving an object we can easily identify and it will give the name of that particular object hello so, so thank what you, will be the accuracy of finding a particular object correctly sir the accuracy is now we are testing the accuracy will be 90% is okay sir because we will give the uh, but object names we will give all the object names sir. then only it will be detected suppose we will give 20 objects it is a book it is a pen for that we are showing it will be identified in moving objects also so uh, if you are giving matches to the our database uh, object then it will easily give first we will prepare the object sir whether it is a human or like that Sir? Okay then. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. I now take the privilege of inviting Mr. Maya Al Sadi and Dr. Basant Kumar to present their paper entitled A Review on Elliptic Curve Cryptography ECC. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Maya Sadi. Welcome to my presentation, which is about a review on elliptic curve cryptography. This is the presentation outline. We will go through the introduction, ECC overview, the algorithm of elliptic curve cryptography, basic protocols of elliptic uh, curve cryptography, and some implementations of uh, ECC. ECC application, and we'll go through the references which I have been used uh, in this paper. Go next, please. Can you go next, please? Sir? Please go to the next slide. Uh, is used to protect the communication between the two parties. It's defined as a method of formula to protect the data or the network uh, between the sender and the receiver. It's used to achieve the confidentiality, integrity, and the availability so that the data will not be modified by anyone. Uh, it will be available when needed, and also it is uh, confidential, so the non uh, There are three main categories of cryptography, which are the private key, the public key, and the hash function. The private key, the pri private key, or called uh, the symmetric key, uh, one key is used for both the sender and the receiver to encrypt and uh, decrypt the messages. In the public key, we have two keys. The public key, which is used to encrypt the messages or the um, the plain text, and the uh, to decipher the text or to uh, decrypt the message, we use the uh, secret key or the private key. We also have the hash uh, function to uh, ensure the non depredation of the, of the data. Uh, elliptic curve cryptography is considered as a public key uh, cryptography where it has it used uh, two keys to encrypt and uh, decrypt uh, the, the data. Can you next please? Yeah, okay. 
To introduce uh, or give you an overview of uh, elliptic curve cryptography, it has been discovered by Victor Myler and Neil Coplitz in 1985. It's purely based on mathematical operation. The main feature of uh, ECC, it has low key size so that 160 bits of uh, elliptic curve cryptography is equal to 1,024 uh, uh, bits of uh, RSA, whereas RSA is uh, another uh, type of uh, encryption and decryption techniques where the ratio between the ECC and RSA is one by seven. Uh, ECC provide high security and faster uh, cryptographic uh, operation where it's needs, uh, because of the low key size, it's require less processor, less memory, and less uh, resources. There are three main algorith algorithms of uh, elliptic curve cryptography, which are the uh, key generation uh, encryption uh, algorithm. <laughs> Can you go to the next slide, please? Hello. Sir, can you please move to the next slide? Okay. Uh, the ECC is actually depending on the general formula, which is uh, the general formula of mathematics, uh, y squared is equal to x uh, cubed plus ab plus x uh, plus b. So this is the graphs that shows the general formula um, that uh, ECC is re uh, relying on. Can you next go to the next slide, please? Okay, here are some of the uh, elliptic curve uh, basic or general uh, uh, processes to uh, generate the, the, for the encryption and decryption. First of all is select the prime number, then calculate the point adding and point doubling uh, on the curve. Uh, then take the, generator, uh, the generating point where its sequence should be larger than the prime number that has been selected uh, earlier. Uh, then choose the prime number which is less than the generating point. As, a private, uh, as the private number of the each of the each entity. Like, for example, you have two entities, Alex and Bob. We will take two, uh, one for each of, of, of the entity. And by multiplying with the secret number, with the generating number, we can get the public key uh, or we can generate the public key. Uh, as an example, we will move to the next slide and there will be uh, an example of how to use or the ECC. Next, please. Okay, for the gene, uh, key uh, generation, for example, for uh, Alice, we have two parties, Alice and Bob. Started with Alice, uh, first Alice need to select uh, uh, a number and that number should be less than the generating point. Then compute the public key of Alice by multiplying the, uh, <coughs> the secret uh, key with the generator. For Alice and Bob secret key calculate Alice secret key calculation uh, done by multiplying the public key of Bob, multiplying the secret, uh, secret number of Alice, and the vice versa for uh, Bob, where the, uh, multiplying the public key of Alex, uh, multiplying by the, um, the private key of uh, Bob. Can you move to the next, please? Move, please. Okay. Here we have the encryption and decryption uh, algorithms uh, process for the encrypting for encrypting the message uh, by Alice using Bob's uh, public key. Uh, first, Alice need to uh, choose any message and random positive number. We call it here k, and k should be an integer, so no fraction is accepted. It should be the data type should be integer. Uh, then calculate the ciphertext, and that's done by uh, multiplying. Uh, the, uh, the positive number with the generator and adding the, the messages, uh, the message that is selected uh, earlier with the, uh, the positive number with the public key of, uh, of Bob. As I told you previously, to encrypt the message, we need uh, to use the public key of the other party. For the uh, decryption, it's uh, by uh, adding the, uh, the ciphertext that has been encrypted earlier 
with uh, multiplying the uh, the integer uh, number by the value of Bob, multiplying by the generator, and then subtracting the uh, uh, the private key, the private key of uh, Bob, multiplying by the uh, by the integer to the uh, the generating key. This is the uh, the process that has been used. It's quite complicated, but when you practice it, you will see that it's uh, it's, it's it's easy to uh, to do. Of course, we need to uh, share the key. For uh, sh sharing the key, Alice uh, select a random number. Let us call it uh, D of Alice. Then calculate the uh, public key of Alex using the formula, which ends by the uh, multiplying the random number with the generator of the x-axis uh, and the uh, y-axis as well with the generator. Uh, repeat uh, steps to calculate Bob's uh, secret uh, or public key. Instead of uh, random number of Alice, we will use random number of Bob. And Alice's secret key calculation will be by uh, multiplying the uh, random number with Bob's uh, public key. And the calculation of the secret key of Bob using the shared secrets of, uh, of Bob, and that's done by multiplying the public key of Alice by the uh, random number of Bob. Let me go to the next one. Next, okay. Uh, here we have some uh, algorithms or some protocols that use in uh, elliptic curve cryptography. The first one is uh, elliptic curve uh, digital signature algorithm. As you know, is the digital signature uh, algorithm is used so that the user will not uh, repudiate that he's the one who's he's not the one who sent the data. So digital digital signature is uh, used uh, to authenticate the devices and the messages that has sent from the uh, from the device. Uh, it's uh, this protocol, which is uh, ECDSA, is considered uh, under uh, ANSI and IEEE standard committees. Uh, in to use this protocol, the communicated parties should agree on the uh, elliptic curve domain parameter, which is explained uh, er uh, earlier. Next, please. Excuse me. Can we move to the next slide? Okay. The uh, next protocol is the elliptic curve uh, Diffie-Hellman protocol, which is used an agreement uh, to allow the communicated parties, for like example, Alice and Bob, to, uh, to establish a secure key, uh, which can be applied uh, in the private key algorithm. Uh, first, uh, the parties should uh, exchange some of the public, uh, public uh, information, and using that public information, the parties can calculate the shared key. And of course, that uh, should be done after agreeing in the elliptic curve domain uh, parameters uh, at the beginning. Next, please. Okay, uh, there are some implementations of elliptic curve cryptography and that has, it has been applied already. Uh, the, features of, the feature of elliptic curve cryptography is the uh, low, size, uh, low size key and that gives a huge, a, a huge advantage where it can be used uh, and it's, it's proven that it has been applied in, the, in hardware especially. Uh, is, uh, for the uh, implementation that has been done is the radio frequency identifier. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it's, it shows that it provides unit security of communication and data access uh, tag memory. And it also, it uh, minimizes the required uh, storage. Uh, storage. Uh, it also has so the operation of the software and hardware will, be, will not require uh, a huge uh, resources. Next, please. Can you move to the next? Okay. Uh, there is real life application that uh, elliptic uh, cryptography used already. 
The one of them is Bitcoin, where uh, the elliptic curve digital signature used as a private, uh, as a private uh, secret key. Uh, as you know, in the Bitcoin, uh, there will be a trans, uh, transferring of the ownership. And that transferring of the ownership needs, of course, the digital signature so that uh, no one deny that uh, or the, the, the sent uh, owners or the sent data is not from unauthorized people. So by using elliptic curve digital signature, uh, the parties can check uh, by attaching the digital signature using the private key of the sender. Next, please. The other application is uh, the secure shell, where the uh, elliptic curve uh, digital signature algorithm has been used so that the authentication between the server and the client can be done uh, using the host, which helps the self-authenticity of the server to the client. And also during the key exchange, the server sends uh, its data to the client so that the client check if the fingerprint match with the saved value. Uh, then the server authenticates itself by signing a duplicate uh, of the uh, key uh, exchange after ensuring uh, the process. Next, please. Okay. The third application is the Austrian EID uh, card. As you know now, for the access control, there are many mechanisms that can be used, like a fingerprint, uh, the, uh, also the eye scanning and so on. Uh, the electronic card is one of the famous uh, mechanisms that has been used, uh, has been used uh, recently. Okay, and uh, this card is embedded with the elliptic curve uh, digital signature as well where it can authenticate uh, the user to access uh, using the access control uh, systems. Sir, the slides, please. Okay. Also, we have here the uh, TLS, which is transport layer uh, security, where elliptic curve digital signature use as well. Uh, the certificate of uh, TLS contains a public key that uh, the server uses for the self-authentication. Uh, the elliptic curve uh, cryptography was added to the uh, TLS through an additional set of cipher suits. And, the, and in the client uh, server hello messages uh, for the authentication. Um, elliptic curve digital signature algorithm supports the selection of key exchange, encryption, authentication algorithm, of the message and uh, uh, identity verification. Okay. I think this is the last uh, application. So those are some of the references that has been used in my paper. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your uh, listening. And if you have any inquiry, any question, please feel free to ask me. So oh, basically, uh, ECC is my it is a uh, implementation of ECC type common pattern. How can you say the right way for this? Excuse me, I think your voice is was not clear. I lost you for a couple of seconds. Oh, ECC? ECC, electrical cryptography takes common pattern. Okay? For the implementation of this uh, ECC algorithm. It takes four number line. Okay, how can you say it in the lightweight process? Christina, I didn't get clear the question because I don't know, the, the voice is not clear. Okay. Yeah, if anyone so this can... Algorithm is deployed. So is this algorithm for deployed from the mobile database? Mobile database? Right. Mobile devices. Mobile devices? See, this is, is uh -huh. algorithm is deployed for mobile devices. No, it's it's for everything. It's not uh, for only one thing. It is it is can be used for the mobile devices and also for the non-mobile uh, devices. Okay. So one more yeah. thing, uh, in the implementation point of view, uh, electrical curve is in the name curve cryptography. Okay. Yeah. It takes for normal mm -hmm. time. Polynomial time. If you take any polynomial equation higher order, 
it takes more time for implementation. Okay. How can you say it's lightweight? I didn't uh, I didn't get your question because as I told you the uh, it's not uh, it's not clear. See, but uh, usually in the cryptography, the more security it means more uh, key size. So whenever you you have more uh, length or more uh, or higher key size, you will get more uh, complexity uh, complexity of the uh, of the of the keys. But here, what the main advantage of uh, crypto in of ECC that it has a low key size but higher and faster uh, cryptographic operation. Because one, so because it has a lot of, uh, a lot of processes to do. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation, Mr. Maya Al-Sadi and uh, Dr. Basant Kumar. I now take the delight of inviting Mr. Basel A. Dabwan to present his paper entitled Sign Language and Hand Motion Recognition Techniques. Thank you. Good afternoon for everyone. I'm Basil Ali Saleh Dabwan, PhD student in Computer Information System in Baba Sahib Ambedkar University, Aurangabad, India. I would like to talking about hand motion and sign language recognition techniques. Actually, in hand gesture recognition application domain, there is a lot of application domain like sign language, robotics, and games, and virtual reality, and human-computer interaction. But we are interested in sign language for the hand motion or for the gesture recognition. What the sign language? Sign language, it is a communication language used primarily by the deaf and dumb people how to interact with the other people in the society, how to give the idea or thought, how to make her or how to share some information with other people in the society. There is a lot shape of the hand language like uh, of the sign language sorry for hand language and face language and A's language it is to use rather than focal language or for the ears communication purpose there is a sign language recognition what's the sign language recognition sign excuse me you can change you can replace this slide yes yes Next slide, please. Next also. Okay, what is sign language recognition? Sign language recognition, it is a tool. It is a tool to convert or translate the deep and dumb language to language like text or voice. The normal people can understand what they need, what they thinking or or thought or what, what they need about it in emergency situation for learning, for uh, sharing uh, ideas or for taking the decision and other things you can use it. Sign language recognition, it is a tool or techniques like algorithm or models to convert the dumb and deaf sign language to normal language for normal people like text or voice. Type of recognition approach recognition of hand gesture can be achieved by using either a vision based or sensor based approach. The vision based vision based approach requires how to acquisition or to the capture of the image or the video of the language from them and then by the camera. It is dependent on the camera. The vision based can capture the sign language from them and the people by camera or depend in the camera. But the sensor-based other type, sensor-based, it is the capture image or video of sign language from dumb or deaf people by the sensor. Sensor like gloves, you can glass, that's where dumb and deaf. When the hand movement, there is a generation, a signal. This signal can convert it in data by uh, 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 Arduino or another hardware. 
the fusion based gasper we hear we have interest in the vision based that depends on the camera because the sensor based most costly and the uh, and dumb or disabled people can go any place you can take this it's very costly the vision based gasper is divided into many stage data acquisition mesh pre-processing segmentation future extraction and classification this is a step to build, build to build a model that model convert the sign language for people dumb and deaf to normal language for normal people like text or voice to build a model there is a lot of algorithm a lot of methodology a lot of technique use that we will explain next the first stage data acquisition we mean by this data acquisition how to capture the sign language from dumb and deaf there is many ways to do like this single camera single camera uh, like whip webcam or stereo camera with depth information or that depends on the light like king cat camera or leap motion controlling there is a lot something next stage image pre-processing this sign when captured by the camera need to pre-processing before entering the model the model that output of model text or voice okay how image pre-processing the pre-processing mean to delete or remove the noise from the pictures there is a lot of filter but the most familiar it is median and the sum filter it is the most pre-processing next stage segmentation excuse me next slide hello yes sir next slide please okay we are talking about data acquisition how to capture sign language from dumb and deaf and image pro uh, and image pre-processing how to before process this image we can remove the noise there is two filters median and Gaussian filter the best and more familiar technique used now segmentation stage the segmentation stage we mean how to separate the interest area of the image from the remaining of the image the image contains a lot of pixels like the shape of the sign and another pixel is not important how to capture or to cut only the important area or the interest area from the other remaining of the pictures in this way in this way we sorry just got yeah. segment here yeah. in this way well, we use the skin color skin color that use rgb or grayscale that to separate the pictures into foreground and background you can code encode it or make digits one for foreground and zero for background to separate the interest area from the other remaining of the images other now next stage future extraction it is the important the important stage in the processes of the image feature extraction what the name of feature extraction feature extraction mean how how to convert the interest area or translate the interest area into feature into feature vector you can translate all this feature like tall or large or angle or rotations or line or edge into digits and this digits you can be say you can be stored in the uh, in the vector shape like the arrays by the numbers because to make it easy to learning the model how to understand or how to work by the sign language of them and deaf. now we go to next stage classification it is the most important stage of the vision based guest recognition stages classification what do you mean of classification there is two types of classification the first supervised classification and unsupervised the supervised classification mean we train we 
try to learn or teach the machine by a label data. Data, it is already known. And the algorithm predicts the output from the new input data. But second type and supervised classification, we mean we learn or teach the machine by unlabeled data and the algorithm can inherit structure output from the input data. There is a lot, a lot algorithm used in classification, but the most familiar, I am summarized for all literature survey about that classification, feature structure segmentation. But now I am talking just for the most common, the familiar, that the result, it is a good, it is above 19 percent. The classification, uh, the classification is very important stage and a lot of algorithms like SPM support to machine, use hyperline and TNN, TNRS, Naipur, and now uh, artificial neural network and now deep learning. Deep learning is very, very important. CNN, confessional neural network, and RNN. Actually, I used uh, the Colab application and the Wika, sorry, Wika application to test the best suitable for sign language algorithm for classification. The SVM, I get the 99% in the KNN, but the SVM 100%. But now I try to use the confessional neural network CNN because now deep learning it is a modern in machine learning, but this need more data set and more input because it, because it is extraction the feature by itself. And uh, I make some comparison bet or between all studies, but in general, I found this is algorithm that I talking with it it is the most important and the most common. Thank you. This is just a brief description for my literature paper. It is just literature paper. In the future, I will decide if any algorithm can I use, but maybe I will use conventional neural network because deep learning is new and it is uh, give a more accurate result, maybe 99% and 100%, but need more data set because uh, uh, feature extraction uh, is uh, by itself can extract. Okay, thank you. Any question? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, uh, for, uh, for your valuable presentation. Yeah, just... So, concept is very good. Um, so, I'm asking two questions. So, uh, practically, is uh, feasible uh, to check all the event days? So, what? Did you find how many images? Did you implement? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, images. 16,000 images. I, I use the Wika, Wika, you know, Wika application. I make okay. test okay. data, okay. Okay. Uh, test data and uh, training data, 200%, uh, 80%, by 16,000 16, pictures. So, okay. Did you check and, and uh, uh, I, I, I the results? What? Uh, did you I, I used the algorithm of I used key nearest neighbor and support vector machine. Yeah, okay. The key nearest, key nearest neighbor, the result is 99% by weak application. I test okay. also the same size of data, 60,000, by the uh, support vector machine. I get the result 100%, but I need to use the deep learning like CNN, conventional neural network, because the CNN, uh, it is more wide. They need a lot, a lot of uh, input or data set because I'd like to experiment uh, maybe 1 million pictures like that, 200,000. Okay, what is the outcome of your proposal system? So where uh, this type of object can be used? Uh, the what? Again? In, in real time, so where it is yeah. used with this concept? Time based real, uh, real, uh, real time to capture the image. You mean? Can I uh, can, can, uh, connect, connect a three dimensional 
uh, or stereo camera with depth information, there is a lot to capture the data. Now, uh, modern Kinkit maybe connect maybe the best now. Okay, sounds good. Can it? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation, Mr. Basel. I now take the delight of inviting Mr. S. Arun Prasad to present his paper entitled Gas Leakage Detection, Alerting and Monitoring Using Internet of Things, IoT. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I sincerely thanks to Bits College for, um, for giving me the wonderful opportunity for sharing my, for presenting my presentation in the international conference. So, I request, I, sir, excuse uh, me, uh, okay. there's a, some disturbance in your voice, sir. Can you make, make it somewhat better? Okay. okay. Mm. The voice is not that much okay. clear. Okay. Now it's okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, my topic is gas leakage detection, alerting and monitoring in IoT. Before entering into the topic, I share some points about the IoT. Uh, in recent days, the IoT became the one of the most finest concepts in all over industry field. Because everyone, uh, every machine, every device can automatically operate with the, with the use of the help of IoT. The IoT, I am audible. I am audible, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, before entering the topic, I give some explanation about IoT. The IoT is nothing but the it is collection of sensors and devices such as microprocessors and the ICU chips that sends the data of the surroundings and they send the data to the cloud by using. Uh, cloud, we can manage large number of data of the IoT. The main usage of this IoT device is we can easily operate uh, electronic device such as home appliances from everyone, from everywhere, everyone in the world. Sure. And I am happy. Yes, sir. Next, we have seen the objective. The main objective of this paper to be to detect the harmful detection gases. The harmful gases suggest that are highly inflammable. The inflammable gases are more dangerous to the human health and the surroundings. The inflammable gases are highly uh, uh, damage caused one. The, the uh, inflammable gases are, are nothing but LPG gas. The LPG gas is the, uh, the most of the gas cylinder incident will be happened in the LPG gas only. Uh, we have designed this paper to detect the uh, harmful gases such as LP, LPG, carbon dioxide, hydrofluorocarbon and ferron. Uh, the gas can be the gas can be sent I'm I am audible. Some sub distance is available. Yes, to detect the harmful gases such as LPG, carbon dioxide, hydrofluorocarbon, ferron, and uh, and neon are the some of the inflammable gases. The gases are sensed by using the gas sensor. If the and the threshold level will be uh, fixed in the gas sensor. If the threshold level can be increased, it can be alert to the uh, required person about the gas level. The person can immediately uh, uh, alert the surrounding uh, uh, surrounding areas. Uh, and the project can be uh, implemented using the embedded system and IoT. 
the embedded system is nothing but the integration of uh, computer component into the iot devices is the is uh, called as embedded system abstract uh, the lpt cache is one of the uh, mainly used things in our daily life but most of the uh, instance uh, gas cylinder instance can be happened with the uh, lpg gas um, the lpg gas cylinder uh, lpg gas cylinder in incidents can be occurred because of the the trigger cannot be placed properly or the cylinder cannot be properly closed uh, this by avoiding this situation we can use uh, we can design this paper to uh, so, am i am audible so it's audible but uh, the voice is not that much clear sir please do check your audio device the headphones okay now it's okay ma oh, no there is uh, okay. so much of disturbance in the voice the, this is raining outside ma uh, okay, okay. Only... due to the weather condition it's okay sir so we can proceed okay. uh, uh we can use the one of the concept in this paper is called the node mc the node mc is nothing but the mic um, the mc means microcontroller unit the microcontroller unit is nothing but the uh, uh, microprocessors and the microcontroller can be mixed to form the one ic chip is called microcontroller unit the node mc means we can place certain microcontroller in the gas cylinder the trigger cannot be placed uh, cannot be placed cannot be placed properly it can be alert using this node mc the device That that the perform the area monitoring continuously. The gas sensor can be connected with the node MCU, and the result uh, can be sensed data can be sent to the user via the smartphone or any other cloud platform. Other LPG gas such as uh, other LPG gas uh, cylinder uh, LPG gas can be available in the air conditioner and the refrigerator. Thus, gas leakage cannot be uh, can can also be detected using this node MCU concept. using this node mc device we can easily uh, predict predict the gas level and uh, if the uh, the threshold level can be fixed with the gas sensor if the threshold level is below the uh, gas level it cannot alert the user if the threshold level can be exceed to the fixed level it can automatically alert to the required uh, home person by using the smartphone or any other cloud platform Uh, introduction. In this paper, we can use the MQ6 semiconductor. MQ6 and the semiconductor is nothing but it can integrate with the gas sensor to accurately detect the uh, gas level. Uh, the gas sensor is made of the sulfur nitroxide. Sulfur nitroxide. Uh, this sulfur nitrous hydroxide has lower conductivity in the fresh air. Uh, then the output of the sensing element goes low. the low signal cannot be uh, can be also be controlled monitored by the microcontroller and it establishes the gas outflow uh, if the micro if the gas level can be exceed the microcontroller can automatically turns on the led and the buzzer uh, buzzer is nothing for the alert uh, uh, once yeah it can direct the surrounding values for every millisecond and it can sending to the cloud if the gas cloud can be exceed than the threshold value then only it can alert alert to the home person if uh, some of the gas can be leak in your house well, this is the uh, one of the source of the can be taken incident can be first incident can be occurred in the jaipur this is because of the the, the gas the lpg cylinder cannot be closed properly and the surrounding no, excuse the, me for interrupting so the time is being out so the second paper I'm is waiting yes. so, so please i am audible uh, sir yes sir you are audible sir so as the oh, session sir.
we are going to be end uh, the other paper has to be submitted so yes, please my make uh, it uh, somewhat uh, short in the paper okay the first incident can be happened in the jaipur this is because of the trigger cannot be placed uh, the gas cannot be closed properly the second incident can be the trigger cannot be placed uh, in the lpg cylinder properly this is the few the literature sir first paper is the iot gas based leakage detection device in this paper uh, we they use the android application for use uh, for alerting the user and the second paper is gas leakage detection and smart alerting system using iot uh, in this paper the lpg gas cylinder only detected and they cannot be uh, detection only performed and they cannot alert to the user uh, the third paper is iot based smart monitoring system uh, in this paper they make it the previous one as a smart as smart one uh, the uh, they you and they sense the sudden sir the audio is not clear sir the... yes ma'am so can you the complete the paper sir can you provide the conclusion so the second person is waiting for the presentation sir the automatic gas detection and the induction robot Uh, in this paper, they use the Android based Android dropper based gas leakage detection. Uh, the system is a survey. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And this in this okay, in this proposed ah uh, in this proposed design ah. Uh, Uh, in this paper, we using LPG gas sensor, CFC sensor, CO2 gas sensor, Wi-Fi module, buzzer, and the LED etc. Um, the use of the LPG gas sensor is gas volume of the uh, surrounding can be uh, directed. Uh, What uh, sea water sensor is uh, nothing but the uh, to the cloud platform as well as as well as SMS to the user. The buzzer is the buzzer is used for the alerting uh, to the or uh, connected with the Arduino is for the uh, receiving alert. Uh, Uh, receiving alert or other uh, perform any other operation such as um, uh, alerting to the na neighbor person neighbor person for this purpose use is the uh, mobile phone this is the smart architecture uh, smart architecture the lpg cylinder uh, lpg gas sensor iot module uh, everything will be connected with the arduino the main purpose of this arduino to connect the multiple sensor Uh, uh, at that at that time, we can use the Arduino. You know, the multiple sensor cannot be connected at that time uh, using any other. Uh, cannot be connected with the any other microcontroller. Using this Arduino, you know, only we can connect the multiple sensors. Module gas sensor module and the gas sensor module we can use the MQ3 sensor. Uh, the MQ3 uh, sensor is for output. Uh, for comparing the output values with the voltage reference, uh, it gives a high output when the gas is sensed. Uh, next next one module sir. is uh, next one module next. is Arduino. Sir, please skip this fast. Yes, Show me the gas module, sir. Once gas module is not MCM. No, no, no. Uh, gas module. G S M module, ma'am. Okay. Next, next. GSM module. Okay, next. Next. What is this loose scripting language, sir? Ma? You mentioned you mentioned in the before slides loose scripting language. Go back to scripting the language. previous slide. Ah, uh, embedded C, ma'am. Embedded C, okay. embedded okay. C. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hmm.
கம்ப்யூட்டர் Arduino is connected to the any port via the USB adapter. Uh, for, the, uh, for detecting the Arduino UNO, we can refer the COM port. And the COM port can be detected with the help of tools. COM, COM port will be detected. And the tools, uh, board, board manager, the Arduino UNO Jenny will be selected. Uh, the, by, uh, the Arduino UNO will be connected to the computer. The compile the code and the upload and the upload the code to the arduino uh, the uploader the uploader code conclude, will be sir. conclude this is the output now. Hmm. or if the code is error free the, the gas sensor can sense the surrounding value and send it okay. to the arduino the, the arduino send the value to the uh, uh, cloud platform this is the cloud platform Uh, the gas sensor value can be uh, referenced in the field graph if the threshold level can be increased it automatically alert to the uh, user by connecting with the wifi module uh, sir excuse uh, me sir. sorry module. to interrupt so the session is coming okay. to end so that if you come out of the session please to re- relog in into the session sir to continue the session okay. to all okay, the now. attendees it's a request okay. to relog in into the session if it comes to end Thank you, sir. Please continue right. with the session. Thank you. Okay. Sir Arun, sir, are you available now? Let me see. Can I look? No. sir thank you for the presentation sir and the presentation is very much uh, most relevant or related to present situation and wise i think thank you so much mr s arun prasad for presenting your paper i now take my privilege of inviting mr vidya sagar to present his paper entitled a secure image and otp based password authentication for websites thank you give a brief intro of uh, our uh, chairperson sir then we'll start with the presentation and all definitely sir good afternoon everyone we'll start with the session now uh my privilege to introduce our uh, prominent person dr c h v m k harigaru i'll give a brief introduction about him then we'll start with the session uh harigaru he completed his mtech from andhra university and He had done his PhD in computer science with specialization in software cost estimation from Andhra University. He was also qualified for UGC NET, JRF, and also GATE in the year 2003. And coming to his academic achievements, he chaired a technical session in national conference held at Aitham College. He also chaired a technical session in national conference held at GMRIT. He also received best teacher award for Geetam University. in the year 2010 he has a very vast professional experience of 15 years he worked as assistant professor in the department of computer science and engineering in anits college of engineering 
and then later as a technical ass assistant in Andhra University during his PhD work. Later he also worked in reputed universities like Nagajana University, Guntur, Adhikavi Nannaya University, Rajamandri, and also Geetam University, Vishakapatnam. And currently is working as a lecturer in computer science and engineering in Dr. V.S. Krishna Government Degree and PG College. He published around 50 research papers in national and international conferences. He guided more than 30 students during his during their MTEC projects. He attended many refresher courses, training programs as a participant, and he also organized several conferences. And let's not forget about his certifications. We have got he had got, he has got many certifications throughout his career, and he also delivered many guest lectures. And he is one of the life member in professional bodies like ISCA, IE, AMIE, AMTIE, and many more. So this is this is about his experience, and uh, I'll I'm very happy to proceed the remaining part to Dr. Harigaru. Sir, please continue. Yeah. So very good afternoon to all. Uh, this is Hari. Uh, he has given a nice introduction. Ajay Ram, thank you. Thank you for uh, your nice introduction. Yeah. And first of all, uh, I'd, I'd like to say uh, thanks to the Baba Institute of Technology Management and the Computer Science Faculty for organizing this kind of uh, webinar in this one. And I'm also very much thanks for Claw uh, uh, Institute of Engineering and Research Publications. So whatever the papers they are going to present it, if they are selected, they are going to be, I hope, uh, they are published in this. So in this uh, situation, you are arranging this kind of a session is very good. And the people are also very much interested to participate in this. Uh, that shows that uh, they are having very enthusiasm towards research and development. Uh, that indicates that this national will going to be definitely close. And thank you. And uh, you can continue this session. Yes, sir. So uh, today our first participant, Vidya Sagar Garu, he will continue with, with his presentation. Myself, uh, G. Vidya Sagar, I am currently working as an assistant professor in the um, department of CSE from Jagan's, uh, sorry, Sri Venkateswara College of Engineering, Nellur, sir. Previously, I have worked with uh, ACT Fibernet as a network engineer, he is, as well as Nellur in Hyderabad branches also. Uh, it is my privilege to present uh, my paper in this uh, conference. Uh, my paper is about, uh, it is uh, a secure image and OTP based authentication for private websites. We are providing a secure image as well as OTP based password for the online websites. The main agenda of this session is we will discuss about the object to introduction, existing system and its drawbacks, as well as proposed system with advantages of the proposed system. Next, the architecture with output screens with a conclusion. The main object of this paper is in this paper, uh, I have double, uh, developed a security system with three levels. The user has to traverse through these all the three levels in order to log into any system. It may be banking system, it may be, it may be any online website or college website, anything. In order to enter into that website, the user has to pass this all the three levels. This is the main goal of this, uh, this paper. The main introduction of this part is passwords at present are not uh, just like a key. They serve several purposes and it provides a privacy keeping the sensitive information very securely. And also, it enforces a reputation and it prevents us the later rejecting the validity of transactions with other passwords. And the abstract or main uh, agenda of this project is we are providing a security sensitive environment to defend the resources against the unauthorized access by implementing different management mechanisms. So now in this paper, we are providing a text-based passwords are not secure enough for all all such applications. So I have tried to increase this protection by involving a three level security approach. Nowadays in existing system, there are a, we have the password based system as well as image based system. These two, two protection based or privacy based systems are uh, not vulnerable. 
since the password will be hacked by any user or the image will be will be shown automatically in front of uh, uh, in front of your uh, person okay nowadays many hackers are hack our accounts and share all the details and collect the uh, documents from the users the main disadvantage of these uh, existing systems are passwords are not fully effective as well as the, it is possible to hacker hack the uh, passwords to other other users so in order to rectify these problems i have developed a three level security based system by providing three levels level at level 1 i am providing text based password at level 2 i am providing an image based password authentication and level 3 automated generated one time password these are the main three levels i have given to enter into any online system by by using these three levels what are the advantages we can achieve is this system not only uses a security person purpose it uses also security place hackers are not very easily to hack the security because three levels are more useful for this paper if any hacker in extreme case suppose although it is difficult but in extreme case when the user hack first two levels that is password level as well as image level it is not able to enter into the third level that is otp based level until or unless if if he hacker knows the email id this is the system architecture at present the user first enter into the level one that is text based password authentication the user has to enter the password based authentication that is level one level two is image based authentication the user has to select a particular set of images and after successful of this level 1 as level 2 the level 3 is email based otp generated authentication at level 3 will be done if it satisfy all the three levels the user will log into the appropriate online system i have developed a modules in order to or in order to rectify this issue the first one is registration module the user has to register herself himself in order to uh, select the images next is text based authentication the user has to select particular passwords for authentication next module is image based password authentication the user has to select particular images to enter into the login system at last opas authentication that is ot one time password based authentication the one time password is mailed to the register email id these are the modules i have developed the output screens are here the output screen the first screen the main home screen is registration sign up or the if you already the user even already register they will log into the login system the first process is registration process i had developed a registration page where the user has to enter the username password as well as his address and email id this email id is very important in order to send the one time password to this email after that the user need to select image second second level is the user has to select the image you can see here the arrow symbol that is set one the user has to select three set of images this is set one grid one that is the user has to select one image in set one that is grid one it is this is the second the user has to select another image this is the set one grid two there are three images this is second image the user has to select the second image third set is third image set one grid two the user has to select three images okay after selecting the level one that is password after selecting the level two that is three set of images the two levels has been successfully registered with email id also okay after successful registration the successful page will be displayed after registration of the user next the data will be stored in a database by using mysql database the data will be stored as well as the image will be generated at and it, uh, generated some uh, unique code and it will be stored in database 
after user registration the user has to be logging the user has to login with the level 1 that is password the user has to enter with the username as well as password that is level will be completed next the user has to enter into the level 2 level 2 is three set of images okay the set 1 grid 1 the user has to select set 1 grid 1 image that is first image next after selecting the first image the user has to select the second image the next the user has to select third image after completing this level 2 next it will goes to the level 3 security purpose that is level 3 security purpose is OTP generation purpose the OTP will be generated automatically to the mail by using PHP we have a random function by using that random function PHP the code will be generated automatically to the registered email ID you can see here the UTP will be generated automatically to the registered mail ID okay after entering this registered email ID registered OTP which, which was got to the registered email ID the user has been successfully logged into the appropriate system okay. hello Vijay the main sir, conclusion sir. Uh, uh, yes sir. sorry sorry for the interruption we have uh, yes, uh, some four minutes left with your presentation uh, make the yes, key sir. point sure yes, sir. sir yeah sure sir, sir Jay, uh, Jay Sagar, first of all uh, you need to tell how many how much amount of time you have been allocated for uh, presentation so how to split up the is, time uh, for, already you send it the details done. to the done? Yes, okay sir. fine sir it's already done sir. i am in conclusion part yes sir yeah yes. no 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 problem no problem uh, the main uh, the main conclusion of this uh, paper is about uh, we are providing simply three things that is three level of security system the first thing is password based authentication second one is an image based authentication with three set of grid images third level is otp based generation this is the main goal of this project to provide is high security and also user these are some of the references and uh, thank you so much for presenting my paper in this conference Hari sir, you can start with the queries, sir. No? Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Have you signed off your uh, screen sharing, Vijay Shagar? Can you come yes, back? Sir. Sure, sir. Vidya Shagar, sir, please make me as the host, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Change. Yeah. yeah, okay. Change me yeah, as the host. Yeah, very good. Sir. Okay, Vijay Shagar. G. Vijay Shagar, uh, very good. Yes. Yes. You have been provided three levels of uh, authentication. Yes. Number one is uh, yes, text sir. based, number two, image based, and then third one is OTP. Yeah. I'm yes, right. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. In text based, what algorithm you have been used for uh, transmission between client and server? There is no such algorithm, sir. We are using uh, some functions, sir. In Java, we have different functions. Okay. In order to generate uh, uh, this uh, OTP based, we have used in PHP in random function. It is an automatically generated. We are Suppose if a user, if, if user types a password. Yes, sir. Yes. User types a password, yes. it should be sent to the server for authentication. While yes, transmitting your data, if a third party person is hacking your information without having any encryption technique, then where is the yes, security? Sir. What algorithm you have been used for transforming your password into encrypted? Do you there understood my no question? Yes, 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 yes. Then, then how do you say that uh, your algorithm is secure? Generally, if you log on to email, okay, your username yes, password sir. will going to be typed. Okay, while sending this email, uh, username and password, it is encrypted and it is sent mm -hmm. to the server. Yes or no? Yeah. In case if it is not encrypted, every yes. third party person can directly see it and hack it. There is no problem. Mm. And okay, fine. Uh, I think then you are also not using any algorithm for image uh, encryption is not there. And OTP is also not there. I but hope. OTP only I have generated algorithms. Sir. This is random. Okay, then fine. Have you seen uh, the second question? Have you seen Union Bank mm. website? Uh, Union no, Bank sir, online. 
I have seen HDFC, already? sir. It is similar like that. HDFC. Okay. Bank. Union Bank is also similarly like that. First of all, a user has to be authenticated by uh, yes. username and password, and followed by image authentication, and followed by yes. OTP authentication. These three type of yes. security levels are already implemented with several algorithms. Then, what new okay. things you have been found in this? What is your new things? Sir, it is Any... only applicable. This process will be only applicable for banks only. By using these uh, techniques, we can use to any websites. That is uh, already, some shopping all, website. Okay, already can use some existing simple concept. Yes. Already mark, uh, in market, we have a PKIs. Uh, public infrastructure companies are there. They are selling all these algorithms. We are purchasing from them. We can use it. What is speciality okay. in your algorithm? These algorithms are already exist. I hope you are already a faculty. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. You're yes, also sir, an doing of six months. Oh, only six months. Okay. Are you joined yes. PhD anywhere? Anywhere? No, sir. no, sir. Okay, fine. So uh, every time, how a research paper is going to be looked at, that implies you should yes. have some new speciality in your paper. Okay. So existing implementations, just to uh, we need to tell what is abstract, what is current existing system, what is it? Your uh, yes. introduction. Your brief outlines, you are describing that existing system drawbacks and proposed yes. system. But what drawbacks the present existing systems is facing, you are not told at all. I'm not criticizing okay. you. So next time okay. onwards, you have to tell that what is existing system is there? What are the problems you yes. are facing? How these problems can be overcome by using your new approach? Good. Uh, nice yes. presentation. And that's okay. Sir. Good. Thank Keep you. it up. Yeah. No. Thank As you. I can, can you continue yes, with it. Oh. Yes, sir. Thank you, Harry, sir. Uh, thank you, Vidya Sagar, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Vidya Sagar, for the wonderful presentation. I now take up my delight of inviting Mr. Hamad Al Darai and Dr. Basant Kumar to present their paper entitled A Study of Image Encryption or Decryption Using Elliptic Curve Cryptography. ECC. Thank you. Uh, now we'll go Thank with you. the second presentation. Mr. Hamad Alderi, sir. Are you ready, sir? Yes, I'm here. I'm yes. Uh, I'll just make you the host. Please uh, screen share your PowerPoint presentation and deliver your speech, sir. Okay. Fine. You'll be so having listen. some. Uh, yes, sir. You'll be having some 10 minutes to complete. So make sure the key points are uh, clearly addressed, sir. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hamad Adderai. My paper title is... Uh, my paper title is The Study of Image Encryption and Decryption by Using Elliptic Curve Cryptography. It is done by myself and my supervisor, is Dr. Patton. Okay. Uh, this, uh, the presentation outline of this paper has separate topics by actually highlight which is important, starting with the brief uh, introduction uh, of ECC, uh, by, uh, following by its uh, character, ECC characteristics, uh, ECC usage, benefits of ECC, image encryption requirements, ECC operation, the, the last one it is the uh, techniques of security analysis. Okay. Elliptic curve cryptography uh, is an encryption technique based on elliptic, uh, elliptic curve theory that can be used as a faster, uh, smaller, uh, and more efficient crypto system. So elliptic curve cryptography is a public key crypto system just like other cryptography, a RSA, like uh, RSA, or a ribbon, a email. So regarding the features of elliptic curve cryptography, this technique allowing users to encryption and decryption the image. Transferring image from plain image to cipher image is the process of elliptic curve cryptography algorithm. Okay. As I show in the figure, the elliptic curve cryptography ECC is an example and one type of uh, an asymmetric uh, cryptography algorithm. The characteristics, the, character, uh, the characteristics of uh, elliptic curve uh, cryptography, including as a follow, it is based in, in, uh, on integer factorization and discrete logarithm of electric curve. It is takes 
nearly 16 rounds uh, to compare uh, amnesic because uses the key in different way and the block size is 64 bit. It has short key links uh, resulting in fast uh, encryption uh, speed and less power consumption, effective key. It is considered the high security cryptography algorithm. Uh, elliptic curve cryptography uses in uh, exchange key, uh, encryption uh, and decryption uh, like image, digital uh, signature. Many devices are small and have limited historic and communication uh, power. We have applied ETC uh, like wireless communication devices, uh, smart cards, web services uh, that use uh, that needed to handle many encryption uh, sessions. Any application where security is needed, but look the uh, power, storage, and communication power that is uh, necessary for our current crypto system. We, why we uh, have used this technique? Uh, and encrypt uh, our decrypt the image, uh, the image. So the benefits for, for that are following uh, confidentiality and integrity, uh, authentication and non repudiation uh, shorter key link used in encryption and decryption, uh, signature verification, uh, speed it up, uh, storing and bandwidth setting. Image encryption required for our us uh, fourth required level uh, like uh, codec uh, complaint compression efficient security level and encryption efficient. Codec complaint uh, so some multimedia application uses codec software to procedure to, to, to compression and compression file. So the uh, encryption uh, algorithm not require and modification that in the codec in the codec compression efficient uh, efficient. This is a one challenge for the user to manage control this uh, size of the storage and flow the rate in the network. So the proposed algorithm for encrypted image must, uh, must not exceed the size and the storage or uh, sent through the network. As I shown uh, in the figure, the three process uh, to maintain compression efficient, starting from the rate of the data flow uh, to complete the compressed data then send it to the wide range of the network. Security level, uh, this part requires secure multimedia application. For example, stream video as a request list level security and other application as a sensitivity like video call conference request high level uh, security. So it is de uh, dependent on the type of the multimedia data. Encryption efficient, even the image, uh, image but still we have a big uh, amount of data so the uh, so the best way run the algorithm to encrypt the image uh, but that's not enough because required from us to check the system also CPU designing to encrypt the image therefore use a specific algorithm to verify encrypt and decrypt the image uh, Hamad sir you have only three minutes left Let's sir please hello sir Hamad sir Okay. Yeah. Elliptic, yes. Uh, elliptic curve uh, cryptography uh, operation is divided in two sections. Okay. The first section it is uh, collect a group of pixels inside a single uh, integer. Uh, it is as we know that uh, the image have a list of pixels. If cryptography method occur in a single integer, so the operation will take uh, more time to because the number of pixels in uh, is a very large. So the solution for that is collect a number of pixels into one group. The second uh, method it is pixel grouping from a big integer, so that the uh, pixel value of of, uh, of coordinator will be in the range of bit size which selected from ETC process. This uh, mathematical uh, for reading more uh, it is including in the paper. Okay, this operation it is first uh, selected the primary M M N uh, X uh, M and Y M. The second is to encrypt uh, through the mathematical uh, function, it will be encrypted. The decrypt the image, it will be uh, opposite for that, uh, as you see in the figure. Okay. Here, uh, I'm studying a list of technique of security analysis as a follow. Uh, okay. Histogram analysis, analysis and a space of key and the sensitivity of key and analysis of entropy technique and 
analysis of uh, uh, of speed. So each one, uh, how I explain for you? Okay, uh, histogram analyzes the technique, uh, depicts the fragment of each uh, pixel of the image. Okay, uh, so a, perf a perfect cipher image has the frequent distribution of the value of the pixel. It's based uh, of key, the security of uh, decryption and decryption uh, depends on the size of the key usage. A specificity of key, it is the change of the original key should be to change the uh, recovered image from the cipher image. And analysis of uh, entropy uh, technique, this technique is a scale of the degree of the randomly encryption. So a basic cipher image who has entropy value. And analysis of speed, it is the encryption of anti encryption of image depends on the execution time applied to the different uh, algorithms and the size of the image. And so on more techniques, we uh, to analyze of cipher image to know the level of the security. So a calculation that algorithm of elliptic curve curve the system uh, that will uh, save uh, that will save the image encrypted and the present and you want to attack it when transferring it on the open network in the future. Also for your study on the ECC has included that the uh, difficulty to solve an elliptic curve discrete algorithm problem is generally hard to with the respect to the key size you okay. uh, a list of preference i'm uh, uh, reading that i'm studying that thank you thank you are you here yeah yeah fine uh ahmed hamad hamad with you hamad are you listening my voice uh, just yeah, but, uh, yeah, close your screen sharing and come back. Come back with your face. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is Hari. Uh, yes. Ahmad, I have a few questions with you. Okay. I'm here with you. Yes. Ask me. Hello. Hari, sir, please ask yes. your question, sir. Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm. Ahmed, are you there? Yes, yes, with you. I'm here. Yeah. <coughs> so sir, you have been. One second, sir. Hari, sir, we have yes? five minutes. Please uh, look at that, sir. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, Ahmed, you have been uh, given uh, only uh, study paper, yes? Okay. What is your uh, What is your contribution in this paper? Have you found any new things? And whatever the references you have been told, that these are all happened in 2008. Elliptogram cryptography has been started in 2001. Yes, there is a lot of work is already, lot of work is already done. Yes, still you are studying on ECZ. So whatever presentation you have been made, uh, this all presentation, Already there it in the standard uh, textbooks it, like William Stallings. Uh, no, I'm, I'm yes. mentioning him in the paper. It is uh, it is a list, but uh, our uh, reference it is including in the, our paper. You can see that it is more. Okay, I'm studying from the 2010 till uh, till this uh, this year 2020. Okay, I got it yani, a lot from 17, uh, 18, 16 years. That paper. Uh, I'm studying this paper too uh, for encryption and decryption the image, okay, by using the elliptic curve uh, cryptography, okay. Uh, what what the encryption, uh, decryption, lot, lot of algorithms has been already developed. Yeah, Just you yeah. go, while, while going, while yeah. going that work, uh, please try to confirm whether your research is uh, going in a proper way or not, okay. Again, hello. Yes. Yeah, before going to this, uh, your research topic, first of all, you let us confirm your topic, whether you are going in the right way or not. Yes, good, nice presentation. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation, Mr. Hamad al -Durai. I now take the privilege of inviting Mr. Suleiman Muhail Abdullah to present his paper entitled, Building an Effective Security Operations Center. Thank you. Uh, 
today I will talk about uh, how to building an effective uh, security operation center. So this is my eight uh, points as uh, considered as a agenda. Uh, I will start by defining the uh, uh, SOC and uh, uh, actually SOC is a, a consolidated or a centralized uh, program or a system uh, that's connected with the IT uh, asset to protect uh, the organization uh, from the uh, threats and uh, any uh, risk and also uh, vulnerabilities uh, uh, as well. Uh, the purpose uh, of uh, the SOC is uh, it's provide a direct support uh, uh, for of the business and partner with the information security service. Uh, also, SOC uh, reduce both the duration and impact of security related incidents, uh, exploiting, like exploiting, denying, degrading, and disrupting and destroying the system required for normal uh, business operation. Uh, actually, this need through effective, uh, or done by through effective uh, monitoring uh, and timely and, and, and adapting and consistent consistent tracking of incident uh, uh, progress. Uh, this is the definition of and the purpose of the uh, security operation uh, centers. Actually, uh, uh, actually, the problem statement of my research is uh, regarding the uh, concept and the implementation of the uh, SOC and uh, why I need uh, uh, the, the SOC. Uh, actually, uh, if you plan to have a SOC in your organizations, so you have to have uh, uh, policies that uh, connecting to your uh, uh, company uh, or objective, and that's you need to uh, protect uh, those uh, uh, objectives. Many of the uh, so uh, engineer they not they don't know from where they from from where they start and how they uh, uh, implement the uh, soc on the organization and uh, every uh, soc should uh, connect with the uh, company or organization uh, objectives. Also, there is uh, points and uh, problem with the roles and the responsibility. Uh, because many of the organization, they think that uh, most of the responsibility are handled by, by the SOC team. And this is uh, incorrect because it, it should be there is a, a staff integration between, uh, between the teams uh, to do a certain uh, jobs like a SOC team can detect, but it cannot implement or uh, batch, uh, batch uh, any uh, vulnerability because normally this task is going by, by uh, another team called the system uh, operation uh, teams and as we know the SOC built up on the uh, information technology uh, assets also there is a there is a, a threat uh, or uh, yes a threat intelligence uh, and it is handled by a security community that every SOC analyst or engineer needs to adhere uh, about it. Right? Like, you know, we need to know the uh, newest uh, risk, newest, newest tools, and uh, newest uh, vulnerability in the world, and how they can apply a use cases or policies in his environment to detect that and prevent from. Oh, I see that. Uh, how many assets in the uh, organization and also there is uh, there is a uh, challenges in the stock with uh, the staff uh, uh, budgets and since this is need to be uh, maintained I will to have uh, add an, an updated uh, uh, security operation uh, center because you know the technology is uh, uh, widely uh, spreaded and uh, widely uh, changing 
uh, every uh, year. And many new services come to board uh, with this uh, uh, knowledgeable or this uh, documents. Uh, in every sort, there is a uh, principal elements you need to maintain it well, like uh, people, uh, process, and uh, technologies. You know, the people means here uh, any uh, sim architect, uh, SOC engineer, or SOC analyst. Uh, this is all about the uh, skills. Also, you have in maybe in the SOC uh, treat manager. Treat, treat, manage, treat uh, management teams, also forensics. Uh, people here uh, are considered uh, is nothing only the uh, skills. Also, you have a uh, technology like uh, like physical control, logical control, and wood controls. Uh, also, wood application controls, uh, DMZ proxies. This is all consider it as a technology. To integrate between the people and technology, you have something in the middle called the process. Without the process, you cannot maintain and integrate people with the technology. In the process here, we mean that you have to have in your organization a policies, and this policies is connected to uh, a standard. Uh, a standard you can uh, bring it from the, any uh, security community or any uh, threat intelligence and connect it to the policy and see how you can apply it in your uh, organization. So this three principal elements you should you should maintain it uh, well to have a successful uh, uh, in, in in place. So I have uh, also an example about the. Each one, for example, here's uh, people. Uh, we have network administrator, network security, and network security engineer, and uh, extra. Even the leadership, uh, uh, leadership aspect, uh, considered as a, a stakeholder in, in a city, in a city, because sometimes you need to escalate uh, something uh, urgent or something that disrupt your work to the higher. Uh, management. So they all consider it uh, a people. And as I said before, this uh, this it should be not only uh, for uh, sub teams. It's expanded to uh, other teams uh, as well. Also, we, as I mentioned, there is many technologies that's connected to uh, a sub. By the way, there is uh, tools that handle all these uh, tasks and responsibility for SIM and SIM need to connect to all this control to uh, to feed uh, data or logs to uh, uh, SIMs. And here is we have some uh, example of these technologies like physical and virus protection and network and uh, etc. Also, we have configuration management, so any configuration management in, in the organization should be uh, informed to uh, uh, security or uh, soft uh, uh, teams. Also, here's the process, which is the important thing to integrate between the technology and uh, people. So you have to have uh, policies, and uh, also you have to have a uh, procedures, and you can conduct uh, business continuity and also risk management also, you have to have an incident response, which considers as a playbook on how you can react uh, to the uh, uh, any uh, incidents that you detected by the uh, scene. Also, you have to have a, a, a plan like a disaster recovery. Also, if you want to think uh, more about the, any incidents, so you have to look for the forensics uh, tools. Also, the important things is uh, awareness and uh, training. So you have to, uh, to keep your employee up to date about uh, how they can do uh, or react to, for example, to phishing uh, email and uh, other, uh, other uh, uh, risk or uh, vulnerabilities or any incidents. Also, you have to enforce security as uh, our cultures and keep uh, that's uh, updated about. So, uh, my research 
design is uh, all uh, about uh, quantities and relying on the secondary uh, data that's from I learned it from different uh, uh, research. So uh, I was uh, uh, compared to many uh, to compare compared to many uh, uh, research papers. Uh, methods of uh, data analysis. Uh, Excuse me, Suleiman sir. Uh, Excuse me, sir, Suleiman yes. sir. Uh, you're left yeah. with uh, three minutes, sir. Please conclude the main part, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. Quantitative methods is required for analyzing and, uh, the information to meet the objective and hypothesis of uh, uh, studies. So here is my findings uh, and uh, uh, results approach to distinct question investigate related to enforceable uh, cyber security dangers depend on the uh, of uh, so also state some information how to be checked and approved by methods basic technique to honestly interline with the elements of specific uh, organizations. So there is also the content analysis of studies selected present that administrator of the population require examination of virtue and exercise with expense to the uh, the so there is my finding and uh, uh, results. So uh, and on the conclusion, so it has a suitable and notable comprehension about the cybersecurity world of 2025. Uh, results are correct with IT and have full skill capability to the whole foundation. Uh, there is security activity activities for each state and region can be ensured automatically through security. Policies and privacy of data uh, resources. Uh, this is all my uh, presentation. I hope you enjoyed my uh, ideas and uh, my research. And if you have any uh, questions, uh, please ask. So that's the end of the presentation. Uh, all the participants <coughs> can ask any queries regarding the presentation. Uh, Durga Prasad, sir, can you hear me? Uh, Good evening, one and all. Yeah, good afternoon, one and all. So we are very happy to have the sessions of uh, four sessions. And it's a privilege uh, to thank all the uh, session chairs and co-chairs, uh, session chairs, uh, who had uh, graced the sessions. And uh, all around we received uh, uh, 37 papers for this uh, uh, GVEST in computer science engineering track. So out of which 14 were selected for presentation and few will few of these papers will be published uh, by the IFERP and the respective journals. It's our privilege for BITS Vizag to conduct this uh, GVEST webinar and uh, I thank wholeheartedly for all the participants who participated with uh, who presented their papers and all the attendees who are very patient and thank you so much and uh, hope for the further endeavors in a great way thank you everyone this will be the end of the session thank you thank you once again for being a part of the paper presentations and the stream of computer science and engineering on behalf of quest 2020 and this is your cse signing off Thank you.